what is up photographers in today's video we're going to look at how to fix a blurry image if you guys are watching this video i'm guessing you are here because you have a blurry image i want to help you guys to fix that image of course the more blurry that it is to begin with the harder it's going to be for us to recover it but we're going to do our best i'm going to show you guys a really cool little plugin that helps you fix these kinds of things and i'm going to show you guys exactly how to use it hopefully it'll be really helpful for you guys and hopefully you will be able to salvage your image let's go ahead and jump right in there i'm going to share my screen with you guys so you can see exactly what I'm looking at. Okay, so for the sake of this video, I'm gonna be showing you these photos that are cataloged here in Lightroom, and then I'm gonna be showing you guys the plugin that we are going to use to fix the blurriness. I know a lot of you guys might have your photos cataloged in Lightroom, so if you do, um, you can simply just find them in Lightroom, find them on the film strip here. Um, I'm gonna show you guys on this photo, it's not too badly blurry, but it is slightly blurry to the point where if I was gonna print this, it wouldn't look very good. So can you see here how the leaves of this tree are not sharp, but the background is? So this is honestly just the effect of the fact that I was using a telephoto lens and I focused on the background and not the tree. I didn't think it'd make a difference, but it did. So we need to fix it. So what we're gonna do is click on the photo in the film strip here. I'm going to control click on a Mac or right click on a PC. We're gonna go to edit in and we are going to go to Topaz Sharpen AI. Uh, then you can go ahead and do edit original or edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments if you've made adjustments on the photo. For me, I'm just going to go ahead and edit the original. And you have to pick up this Topaz Sharpen uh, AI software, which is where this photo is going to open in. Now, you can pick this up on Topaz's website. I'll include a link down below where you can go and pick that up. But you guys are going to see how well this software really works. It takes a second to load in, but here it loads in. This is probably what it's going to look like when you load in. There's a lot going on that we need to sort out. I want to show you guys how to use this software to make it look better. It looks a little bit better already by default, but I'm going to make it look a lot better here. Now, the first thing you need to do here in Sharpen AI is to adjust a few different things. First of all, I like to check this box here, which basically allows the software to automatically decide what it should use for the image. Then I like to click right here to get to the comparison view, because in the comparison view, it's going to choose four different models of sharpening this image, and you can look at all four and see which one does the best job. You can see that it's looking at the same spot on all the images. Now, you can go ahead and click and drag around your image if you want, but I will warn you every time you click and drag around the image uh, it is going to require you guys to allow it to like re-render so you can see how each one is rendering slowly here um, and after each one renders you can look and see which one you like the best now this is just selecting four different models here we can actually change those models if there's one we might think work better so right now we're using out of focus normal too soft very blurry out of focus very blurry and then too soft normal so we can change one of these if we want. What I like to do is look at which one I think is not doing a very good job. And I don't really think this too soft, very blurry one is. You can see it's introducing a lot of noise. So maybe we want to change this one um, to something different. You could try one of the noisy ones or the motion blur. Um, just for this example, I'm going to try maybe a motion blur normal just see to see how that looks. I know this isn't really technically motion blur, but it's nice to always check it out and see. Once that loads out, uh, you can go in and you can make adjustments to each box individually if you want. Now remember, we're only gonna take one of these, but what we're doing right now in the preliminary phase here is deciding which model works the best. If you wanna go adjust the settings, you can click on each different one here. You can see how that changes my selection on the right. And that also allows me to change the model parameters. So when I click around here, you can see how the model parameters change. You can see it's hardly removing any blur. Let me go try on the normal out of focus to remove more blur. You can see how I have this box checked here, which basically allows it to automatically detect and then automatically set the settings how it wants. But if I go ahead and change this a little bit, We'll let that load out and we'll see how that looks when we move, remove a little bit more blur. Now, usually I find that probably four times out of five, the using the little lightning rod here, which allows it to automatically select for you is gonna work great, but occasionally you will wanna go in and dial in the settings. This is already looking a little bit better. Remember, I'm looking at the top left image. Um, and I think overall, I'm going to just go ahead and go with this bottom left image. It's actually looking a little bit better to me. Once you've decided which image has the best overall look here, 
you can go ahead and double click right there and now it loads it out in one big screen. So now it's a lot easier because we can just go back and forth with this one image. The cool thing is we have this slider bar here which is gonna show us a before and after on the left and right. We can zoom in or zoom out by selecting this magnifying glass here. Remember every time that you zoom or every time that you move around the image, it's going to re-render. So it's gonna take just a second. So I'm just gonna let this load out where it is and we will look at the before and after. You can see the bar is loading here and it doesn't take too terribly long. It's not super snappy depending on how large your image is and what kind of machine you're working on. Um, but now you can see the before and after. And the changes are definitely subtle. Where I want to see it more especially is in the trunk of this tree. Let's go ahead and scroll down and let's see what it does for the trunk of the tree here. And again, remember, we can go ahead and adjust these settings. Now, if you're wondering about the select and the post-processing, uh, I'm going to show you what the select does in a second here on a different photo. That allows you to select a subject in a landscape photo. That's usually not going to be what we want to do because that's going to work really well for things like portraits, which I'm going to show in just a second here. Post-processing just allows you to add grain. I'm not going to add any grain because I don't like to add grain to my images, but if you wanted to, you could do it there. Okay, now this is loaded out. We can see the before and after. It's definitely adding some sharpness back into my tree trunk. Let's go ahead and bring up the remove blur quite a bit just so we can see the effect a little bit more pronounced. Um, but essentially, that's kind of how you use this software. You just adjust the sliders around until you find a spot that you really like, until it really helps sharpen your image. Be careful not to over sharpen it because you can overdo it. Of course, removing 100 blur is going to give us the nicest, sharpest, crispest image. However, it might produce some artifacts and some stuff that doesn't really look that great. So we want to use everything in moderation here um, and be sure to slide it back and forth. This process normally takes me a few minutes. Uh, you can see now we've done quite a bit better job sharpening the trunk and as well as the leaves are looking really good. It's looking a lot sharper now. We could dial that in. Whenever we're done, we're going to go ahead and hit apply and we'll be done to it. But let's go ahead and look at another example here. All right, so this is the next photo I want to look at. It's one I shot with my drone and sadly, uh, like many drone images, the focus point did not quite hit. So it's a little bit blurry. Now, uh, this is a little blurry to be fixed, but I'm gonna show you guys how the software works because it does still do a pretty nice job when I use Topaz Sharpen AI. Um, I am going to edit the original, click edit and let that load out. Now, you have to, the thing you have to remember here is that the blurrier your image is, the more difficult it's going to be for the software to actually work. Again, remember, I'm gonna hit the comparison view here and I'm gonna to zoom to a spot on the image that I feel like is pretty good. Right about there is good. Let's go to 200% as well. See how that works. Um, so anyways, back to what I was saying. You gotta be really careful because the blurrier your image is to begin with, the, the software can only do so much. You can't expect that you're gonna have a totally horribly blurry photo and bring it back. But this software will help if you've made a slight user error in maybe your focus point. It's gonna help you a lot to bring back um, what's in your image. Now again, I'm gonna change this one. I don't really like motion blur. So we have out of focus normal and out of focus very blurry. We have too soft normal and let's get too soft very blurry in there. And then we can look at the results. I'm already liking the top left. It's kind of over sharpening almost though. Uh, yeah, you can see too soft is not looking very good. So let's go ahead and go with the this one up here, out of focus normal. We'll double click on that and we're gonna stay at 200% and then we can turn this model parameters on, you can see it's recommending basically no noise suppression with a little bit of remove blur. Um, and you can adjust these settings as you see fit. We're going to let it load out and see what we think here. So you can see, I mean, it's, it's taken the image back quite a bit now. Is it perfect? Would I want to print it 40 by 60 and put it on the wall? Probably not. Um, but if my goal was social media, this is going to help quite a bit because it's going to bring back enough sharpness for the image to look good. We can even add some remove blur. You'll see how it's going to make these waves kind of crunchy through here. Let's go with like 45 instead, actually. Um, but like I said, it's a great way to remove enough blur that your image is workable. Um, if you're doing some landscape projects for a client or you're doing portraits or whatever and you have an image that's really really great but it's slightly blurry this can really help save you when you are dead in the water you can zoom back out to like 100 percent 
and toggle it one more time. I really like using this split view here. I pretty much only use comparison and split. You can use side by side, but I don't think that it works as well because then you're looking at the left side is before the right side is after. Whereas this split view is really nice because you can toggle it back and forth basically wherever you want just by sliding so that one works really nice so go back and forth between the split view and the comparison view for the best results if you don't have noise in your image i recommend just turning this suppressed noise to basically zero you can go like up to five is probably fine so you can see now image is looking a lot better a lot sharper um, the results, like I said, aren't perfect, but um, they are incredibly good for a photo that was blurry, especially these trees over here. You can see the trees started out really blurry and it's actually done a pretty nice job over there. So that's looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and look at a portrait for those of you guys that might be trying to fix a blurry photo of someone. Go ahead and load up a portrait here. So this is the photo that I have, the portrait that I'm going to be using, which I slightly, slightly missed the focus point. You can see my model is not super sharp. When I'm zoomed out, it's not too bad, but we would like to make her a little bit more sharp, make it look a little bit better. Again, I'm going to go control click on a Mac. I'm going to go up to edit. I'm going to go down to Topaz Sharpen AI, and that's a right click on a PC. I'm going to go edit original. I'm going to hit edit here. It's going to take just a second to load up into Topaz Sharpen AI. Um, and then again, I'm going to do the same thing. We're going to go comparison view and we're going to let these all load out. Before it loads out, let's scroll down to her face so we can see a little bit better. Let's go to 200 percent. So we'll zoom that in and now it's going to take just a second here. One thing I did also want to mention is once you hit apply, this will load back into Lightroom as its own photo layer, essentially. So you'll have a brand new photo to work with that is totally fresh, brand new. You can throw it in Photoshop, edit it in Lightroom, whatever you want to do. So it's nice because this is really easy to work into your workflow. So now that I'm looking at this, uh, too soft, normal, definitely not looking good. Too soft, very blurry is not really looking that great either. I don't like what's going on around here. Um, and I should mention that all this stuff in the background um, is the light ray coming through. It's not like weird noise that this is adding that's actually in the photo. Um, I'm liking these two on the left. I think I'm probably liking out of focus normal the best. So I'm going to double click on that one. Let that load a little bit now. Uh, I'm going to use the model parameters here. I'm going to check this, let it automatically do its thing. Now I want to show you guys how select works. So the way select works is it selects the subject in your scene. Like I mentioned before, it's not that helpful for landscapes because a lot of times your whole scene is in focus. So you want to resharpen the whole thing. But for portraits, it can be really nice because I don't need to sharpen the background that's supposed to be blurry in this image. So what I can do here, I will show you guys. As you can see, that's looking pretty good already. Um, but I will go ahead and turn the select on. I'll drop this box down. I'm going to have it auto select subjects. You can do people or portraits, but you can see it already does a nice job. Now this works just like a mask in Photoshop. Anything that's white is going to be sharpened. Anything that's black is not going to be sharpened. So the cool thing about that is you can see how now I'm not sharpening this stuff in the background. I'm only sharpening my model here. So I'm only bringing back the sharpness in my model. This is a one problem with portraits that a lot of people run into is when you just put a basic sharpening filter on top of a blurry image, sharpens the background and you don't want the background sharpened. You just want to sharpen the model. You can see how easily it selected my model here. If you really want to get into the nuts and bolts of it, you can go in and refine. There's lots of great options to refine if it's not making a good selection. But on this photo, it made basically a flawless selection. It's already looking pretty good. I went ahead and checked this box to use these model parameters. And that honestly is looking pretty good to me. We'll go back, zoom out one time here. Just look at our whole model one last time. But I think it's looking really good. Like I said, adjust these sliders as you see fit until you see the image uh, how you want it. But I think this will really help you guys to fix a photo that is maybe just slightly out of focus um, that you don't want to send off to your clients or print for your wall or whatever. You can use this to help salvage a photo. Uh, obviously, I know there's going to be a lot of people saying, oh, the quality is not as good as it would be if it was in focus. Of course it's not because uh, you want to get the image right in the field first. Uh, you can't just rely on shooting a blurry image that you can fix it in post-processing. But this is a great option for those images that you're not going to be able to recapture that are already blurry that you want to fix. I think this is just a fantastic option. All right, now you can see we've got it loaded out. We can just slide this bar back and forth, and that pretty much fixes my image. I think it's looking great. We'll go ahead and move on with that and hit apply. So that's how you use Topaz Sharpen AI.
Thank you guys so much for checking out this video. I really hope it was helpful for you guys and that you were able to salvage your image to create some really cool photos. I know what it feels like when your images are blurry and it just sucks when you've got a great image but it's too blurry. Hopefully this will help you guys to fix that amazing image I know you guys are working on. Thank you so much for checking out this video. If it was helpful for you, please make sure to subscribe. I always, every single week, am posting a new video. A lot of times it's got tips and tricks on how you can create better photos, mostly centered around landscape and nature photography. Thank you guys so much for checking out this week's video and we'll see you guys next weekend. Have a good one. Bye-bye.